G'day folks, I'd like to talk about some uh, current opportunities to, uh, for property investors in this enormous country called Australia. Uh, firstly, capital growth and cash flow. Which of the two are more important? It's often been a, uh, a debate among property professionals. My personal view is they are both important. At Propertyology, we target locations for their growth potential because I feel it's the growth over time that ultimately will determine uh, what quality lifestyle we have in our retirement years. But the cash flow is very important as well. It's, uh, uh, to me, it's very important to the head on the pillow test. Um, and it's also um, controlled cash flows that enables an investor to stay in the market and also uh, helps them accumulate additional properties over time. One investment property will very rarely be enough for anyone to retire comfortably on in future years. Um, so capital growth and cash flow are very important. Um, right here, right now, the Propertyology team is actively investing in seven completely different cities across four different states. And we do not pay a single dollar more than $500,000. Uh, on occasions, the purchase price of a property that we negotiate for our client might actually have a two in front of the purchase price, but certainly no more than $500,000. Um, um, how we um, select locations? Well, there's 25 million uh, people who live in this country, about 10 million dwellings, residential dwellings across our eight states and territories. Yes, we all know there are eight individual capital cities in Australia, but that is not your property market. Your property market is, um, you need to think like, um, like a share investor would do and how many companies are on the stock exchange. Well, to a property investor, there are 185. That's how many individual towns and cities, not suburbs, 185 individual towns and cities that have a population of 10,000 people or more. So you have a lot more opportunities than those eight capital cities. In fact, most people um, don't look beyond two or three capital cities. And I wonder not many people picked Hobart as we did back in 2014. Um, seven different cities, four different states we're investing in right now. Now I'd like to share with you some case studies talking about real clients, real properties, real cash flows, some real capital growth. Um, first one I'll show you, this is a first time uh, property investor. We bought this property roughly 14 months ago for this first time investor, a four bedroom, two bathroom house, uh, accommodation for four cars. Um, structurally sound, low maintenance property, $336,000. That's all we paid for that in a location that our client never ever would have thought of to invest in on their own. That particular location, it has grown by 20% in just 14 months. Now, as we all know, 2018 calendar year um, was not a particularly healthy one in terms of property markets, but um, Australia is not just Sydney and, and Melbourne. Um, there are multiple markets doing different things at different times. This was one of those locations, and that first time investor, his asset is worth today 20% more than what he paid for it 14 months ago. The cash flow for this same client, a real property that he paid $336,000 for, um, at the time of purchase was rented for $340 per week. Being conservative, I'm led to believe that the same tenant is still in that property today, but um, when we're doing cash flow budgets, we're conservative and we work on the rule of thumb of a property being occupied for 48 weeks out of 52, or vacant for four of those. So this individual client, rental income $16,300 per year. The biggest expense for every property investor, unless of course you pay cash for a property, is our loan costs. For this individual client, his loan costs were $12,000 per year. We all have council rates, property management fees, repairs and maintenance. When we look for properties, the non-negotiables are it must be structurally sound and it must be low maintenance. If we get those things right in a typical year, it'll cost an investor roughly $500 per year in repairs and maintenance on that property. And of course, they've got insurance. Now, even though this individual property was purchased with as small as a 10% deposit, it costs our client $1,000 per year out of his own pocket to hold it. One grand, that's it, over 12 months. Now, that is before any negative gearing benefits. Speaking of negative gearing benefits, what an exciting announcement last week for property investors. Uh, no more uncertainty about negative gearing being um, significantly diluted. What that is going to do at a national level, in our professional opinion, is that's going to increase buyer activity by roughly 5%. Negative gearing is obviously a national thing, it's available in all locations. There would have undoubtedly been some um, otherwise willing property investors who sat on the fence 
waiting to see what happened with the federal election campaign. Now that that's over, I reckon there'll be an additional 5% um, buyer activity just from property investors because of the federal election campaign. During the federal election campaign, we also had the announcement of a first home buyer scheme wherein a first home buyer can purchase a property with as little as a 5% deposit and without paying mortgage insurance. Now, that is very important to property investors because that will mean that there'll be an increased volume of first home buyer activity. I believe that that one initiative will add an additional 5% buyer activity nationally. At the end of the day, it's buyer activity that creates competition within a market that creates price growth. Um, the other very exciting things, um, we had a trifecta last week for very exciting news for the property sector. And the third of those was APRA, um, acknowledging that credit supply had, uh, had become ridiculously tight um, and they signalled uh, that they are going to relax that. In my opinion, they have still got uh, further um, relaxation to go with that, but to, to actually admit and acknowledge they're going to uh, um, make some relaxation, I believe that's uh, the best news of all of those three things. And I think it's going to add about an extra 10% buyer activity from uh, credit supply uh, becoming better than what it was during 2018. So what am I telling you? There's three macro national announcements that individually are all going to add to buyer activity. They are all going to contribute to property price growth over and above what we saw in 2018. It's a really exciting time to get into property markets. Um, next case study I want to share with you. Again, a real property for a real client. This time, the real client, lovely couple, uh, they're financial planners. We really enjoyed working with those during 2018. This property is bought in a completely different city um, to the one I was talking about earlier. Three bedroom, one bathroom house, 987 square meter block with a massive man cave out the back. We only paid $337,000 for this property. It's got a rental yield of 5.4%. So it costs very little to purchase it. It will cost them nothing each year to hold the property. Rents will cover all expenses and have a, have a bit of a surplus. Why we chose this individual city um, was a combination of significant investment in infrastructure. It's a location that has a very diverse economy and there's a jobs boom uh, about to unfold. So um, we're very excited about that location. Next thing I'd like to talk to you, not so much about a property, but some work that we're doing um, with a client at the moment. They're actively working with their broker to get finance in place in preparation for investing. What they've already got is their family home with a reasonable amount of equity in it and a facility already in place, $200,000 um, equity that's been released with the intention of using that $200,000 to invest in property. Now, rather than put all of that $200,000 into one expensive property, we've discussed with them the pros and cons of spreading that um, around into two more affordable properties, not having all your eggs in the one basket, taking advantage of two capital growth opportunities and having much stronger cash flows in doing that. Uh, we've given them some guidance about price points in two completely different cities that we'd love to help them invest in. One of those locations would have a maximum purchase budget of $370,000. Um, the other location in a completely different state, um, we would spend no more than $350,000. Um, now, this particular strategy for this client, I guess essentially they're financing 100% of the investments, um, therefore they're all 100% tax effective. They're using the equity in the property, putting it in their family home, putting it to good use. And collectively, these two properties will cost them no more than $8,000 per year for two properties, two different cities. Um, combined asset values of about $320,000. Um, very safe way to invest, diversifying your capital and stronger cash flows. Um, before I talk about this last case study, uh, I mentioned some announcements that are going to add buyer activity into property markets nationally. Well, there's another announcement also, but not so much an announcement at this stage, but a signalling, a very strong signalling. That's from the Reserve Bank. Just last week, um, they, they strongly signalled that they're going to reduce interest rates for the first time in nearly three years. And one economist, a general by the name of Bill Evans, the senior economist for Westpac, he predicts that there could be as many as three interest rate reductions over the next seven months. Um, now, how does it affect the property investor? Well, um, that's going to add even more buyer activity, more potential for property price growth. Already, we've got strong rental yields of about 5% plus, certainly properties that we buy 
um, that's what you can expect from propertyology. We've got lots of locations throughout Australia where rents are rising. There's vacancy rates that are already low, rents are increasing already, and the building approval volumes are low, which means that the um, rents are likely to tighten even further. Some wonderful opportunities out, out there, folks. Um, we're currently investing in seven different cities, uh, as I mentioned to you. Our last case study. This property is the fourth property that we've bought for this individual client. When uh, we first met them uh, nearly five years ago, um, we just started investing in Hobart back then. Uh, we got them into that market and two other um, uh, completely different parts of Australia. Um, this particular property, their fourth one, they purchased that by tapping into the equity in their first investment property, the Hobart property. Um, so the deposit monies and the acquisition costs are all from borrowed funds and uh, uh, using equity to, to get into the market. We paid $302,000 for this house, 302. It's a four bedroom house, solid brick, uh, very flat, clear block in a central part of town in this really strong city. Um, very diverse economy. We are extremely excited about the outlook for its economy. It's the number one reason why we uh, uh, chose to buy there. Um, so they have now got four properties in their portfolio. They are by no means high income earners. They are everyday Aussies with, uh, with a few kids, um, average incomes. They've now invested four properties in completely four different cities throughout this great country. Um, we love to them mention every time. They've planted four seeds, so they are well on their way to in future years living a retirement lifestyle that will be significantly better than what their own parents would have lived because they've been responsible with their money and they've engaged expertise. We've done that for them and we would love the opportunity to do it for you too. Uh, I cannot stress enough how exciting it is. Um, buyer activity is really what drives price growth and if you cannot see from this presentation that there'll be a lot more buyers out in the market now than what we've seen for quite some time, I don't think you, you'll ever appreciate that. The most important information for property markets is the local conditions the local economic drivers, the local levels of housing affordability um, and the local housing supply. That's the stuff that we are all over. By understanding that, by looking at every location in Australia all day, every day, is how we discover the Hobarts of the country. It's how we discover locations like this. It's how we discover locations like that. And it's how we want to discover a location to help you invest in that location in the right property at the right price. Please give us a call on 1300 65 40 70. Whether it's myself or any other member of this wonderfully talented team, we would love to get to know you, talk more about our services, educate you, earn your trust, earn your confidence, and help you invest. Love to talk to you soon.